All right, everyone. What's going on? What's going on? Um, pretty much the, tonight's stream is going to be consisting of a uh, playthrough of a uh, zombie revenge, uh, a full arcade mode playthrough, I should say. Uh, for those who don't know, pretty much just give you just a quick rundown. Uh, this game is pretty much a spinoff of the House of Dead series, but instead of it being like a light gun rail shooter like the usual games are, uh, zombie revenge basically takes it to like a 3D beat em up approach gameplay wise. So think of other games like, for example, Streets of Rage. Dynamite Cop and uh, Die Hard Arcade and add a little bit of uh, House of Dead to it and you get Zombie Revenge basically. Uh, now for those of you that who are familiar with the House of the Dead games, um, you're probably going to notice a lot of references throughout uh, this playthrough since again, uh, Zombie Revenge is technically a spinoff of uh, House of the Dead series. Now as far as where it fits in the storyline as far as House of the Dead goes, I I don't think it's considered uh, canon. I don't think they've ever really confirmed whether Assigned Revenge is canon to the series or not. And I also heard apparently too that uh, the director of House of the Dead games, um, Oda, we've, um, he wasn't involved with this game necessarily either. So I think this is uh, one of the few games directed by um, that particular House of the Dead, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, director that uh, doesn't wasn't involved with this game. That and I think uh, House of the Dead Overkill. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this game came back out in 1999 on the Dreamcast and also arcades as well. And uh, if you can tell, this game is also running on the uh, Naomi arcade board, which uh, a lot of uh, arcade games back then, especially around this time where the Dreamcast was out, ran on this uh, particular arcade board. Like for example, um, House of Dead 2 is a pretty much fine example of that. Um, Capcom vs. SNK, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Power Stone, Street Fighter Alpha 3 Upper, and what else? I'm trying to think. What are the games right now? Uh, Miami Board. Well, just to name those two at the top of my head, there are a lot of games back then that ran on the Miami Board, which is why the Dreamcast had a lot of uh, arcade ports to it. Since I think the Dreamcast ran, um, well, had a little bit of the uh, Naomi arcade um, board specs to it. But I think this is still a pretty fun game. It's definitely not a masterpiece by any means. Again, it's a spin off, so I wasn't really expecting anything too great when I played this back then as a kid. But, um, I think for what it does, it's pretty fun. Again, just pick for, like, Dynamite Cop and, uh, Die Hard and blend it in with, uh, House of Dead, basically. It's a fun game. It's definitely a game you definitely have to, like, play with a couple friends, like, grab a beer or two and just go to town, beating the shit out of zombies. It's a fun game. So I'm pretty much going to be doing an arcade playthrough. So let's get into it. So there's pretty much three characters you can play as. You can play as basically uh, Stick Brightly. You can play as uh, let's see, Linda Rhoda and uh, Bushim Busujima. Now I mostly stick with Stick Brightly because I feel like he's probably the most balanced one out of everyone. So I usually just stick to playing as him, just for simplicity. I haven't really played too much for the other other characters besides Busujima. He's a little bit more... I feel like once you have like the basic gist of the game down, that's when you really start messing with him more. Are we still following this guy? He's the one making the zombies. To catch him, we have to follow. Let's go. Yeah, keep in mind too, uh, since this is a spin-off of the House of the Dead games, expect some very atrocious voice acting. <laughs> So as far as like I guess the combat goes, like I said, it's a 3D beat em up game, and uh, there's a couple like different like combo moves you can do. Like say for example, I can just do a straight punch, 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 or if I want to do like an axe kick, I can do the punch attack and um, shoot button. And also you can also let's see if I can pull this off. You can do what it called like a holding combo. Where basically, you pretty much punch the enemy, hold down the punch button, and follow up with either a kick or a punch. But uh, it's gonna depend on which character you're playing as, because uh, each character, I guess, has their own set of moves. But they all kind of like play very similarly, so once you have like the basic gist of that down, then you can pretty much get a feel of uh, how the game plays. You can also pick up uh, weapons as well, which I think adds uh, more to the fun. Help me! Help! So right, for example, I have a shotgun now. Eh, personally, not a fan of this weapon. I think in certain situations, it's it's okay. But I think if anything, when it comes to a lot of the weapons, I mostly go for the machine gun. Especially in the tough crowded like areas. Take that. Yeah, I agree, uh 2 GD by this game definitely has some pretty interesting boss designs, honestly. Here, it's like take this. 
a little bit of like, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of like House of Dead 2 a little bit, but a little bit more creepier and a lot more like, I guess, body horror-like, if that makes any sense. Not like Silent Hill necessarily, but um, I don't know, it's very hard to, I don't know, something about, I guess, like the Dreamcast era, or Y2K era, as they say, of um, enemy like designs, for, like zombies and creatures just hits different, you know? What? All right, here's gonna be our first boss, the cover boy of uh, Zombie Revenge. All right, so I'm gonna actually try to get that crate open first, and see if I can take out these zombies, or he can see if the zombie will take out these zombies. All right, let me actually grab that life up before I forget. So one of the cool things you can do, actually, is, um, as I said, one of the holding combos with this, uh, boss, you can actually, like, grab a pipe out of this guy. It's actually pretty cool, actually. I think the strategy here is to hit him from behind, but I have to see if I can time this right, because if I don't, he's just gonna straight up attack me, like so. Let's see if I get behind him real quick. And I gotta be careful with that. Thankfully, you can block in this game, but uh, the more you block, I think uh, the more kick damage you're gonna take. So, you have to be pretty wise and uh, cautious with it. Alright, let me just kill this fucker. He's just taking up time. Because there is a time limit, unfortunately. There's no time. Not, not a bad uh, boss at all. Like I said, you're in those a lot of uh, House of the Dead references, so uh, you guys were paying attention. The sound effects are the zombies, straight out of uh, the first game. Like that one. Where they be like the zombie sound effects, the uh, attack runs, the weapon sounds. There's a lot borrowed from uh, the series. Give me a, so the chicken me a floppy no disk, and let's just put it in here. My god, that face just screams Dreamcast, like, graphics. You ever just look at a game and just you can tell by the graphics what era it belonged to? Yeah, you take one look at, uh, Zombie Revenge and just know for a fact this is definitely, uh, the Dreamcast era of, uh, faces. So there's three tarot cards here. I usually pick the, this one here because I think, uh, as far as I'm aware, this is the easiest tarot card to pick since it does affect the, how the final boss of the game is going to play out. And uh, I always went with that last one since I believe that's like the easiest way to, I guess, approach that final boss when we get there. Oh, look, some more uh, House of Dead sound effects. Such as the bats here. Even uh, these uh, sewer zombies here, they're literally straight, uh, I think they're literally straight out of uh, House of the Two, actually. Yep, yeah, they look like the exact same um, creature models from uh, House of the Two. All right, actually, get the, let me get the, let me get the machine gun, actually. Let's go! Alright, episode 2, we're in a series now. That smells awful. Oh, you don't say. My god, the voice acting is just bad. It's really bad, honestly. I think, personally, it may be worse than House of the Dead 2. Like, House of the Dead 2 has, like, really bad voice acting. That That's, like, the charm to it, I guess. But, uh, this one is just... I don't know. It's just... I'm a little concerned what the hell went on with this voice acting. So I think one thing I forgot to mention too, as far as like shooting your gun, um, you, depending on how uh, I guess long you uh, hold the reticle for certain enemies, your uh, gunfire power is actually going to be a lot stronger. That and uh, you actually uh, charge your uh, weapon too, or your gun I should say. So if I hold down the shoot button, I can let out a really powerful uh, bullet right there. But it does take about like three uh, bullets at the clip. And I really don't see myself using this, uh, using that a lot honestly. Only like in certain situations will I actually charge up the gun. 
But other than that, I can't really say uh, I end up using that particular uh, card jump attack. Did you guys notice there I was able to um, get him a couple more kicks after the, that uh, the axe kick? I just found out recently too, the way to do that is I think you have to be infected. Now what I mean by that basically is, um, say for example, if my uh, health bar was um, having that little, I guess, purple like effect and my character was like kind of like showing a little bit of purple like skinish tone to him, uh, basically that means um, I'm infected. Now it's not like Resident Evil where it constantly drains your health. Uh, this one, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't drain your health, but what it does as far as I'm aware is... Um, it basically means that the more you get hit infected, the more your character will slow down with his attacks. But the caveat to that is basically um, be able to do uh, more, uh, I think, more moves with your uh, combos, Machine like I gun. did just previously. So I guess you have to use it like sparingly. I'm actually gonna go in this room here first. All right, so this is life up next here. I want to take care of these zombies first. I want to see if it's possible to actually do this part without actually getting hit. Because uh, this is a very uh, tight spot to be in. Life bomb, life bomb. Oh, okay, where goes that one? Yeah, this is a tough room to get out of in one piece without getting hit. Guys. Who is the voice? Who is the voice announcer for uh, the bullets? Bullets. Put a lot of emphasis on this. So I think how the game um, pretty much uh, ranks you as far as like high score goes is basically um, not necessarily the zombies you kill, but how many uh, hits or yeah, how many hits you can get off each enemy. So let's see, for example, how many hits is gonna give me? All right, so that's around eight hits. So I get about two hundred from that, I think. So you can pretty much do a lot of like, I guess if you're really good at this game, you can definitely get a good like 50 hits in for uh, certain enemies. I won't say all the enemies, but certain enemies. But uh, I'm not trying to go for a high score run here. Nor am I even trying to, nor am I even trying to do a one credit run because uh, that is going to take uh, a couple more uh, playthroughs. Alright, so as far as uh, these two bosses go, alright, so it's gonna be two of these guys. I usually like to take them on one by one. So whenever they start charging up their little spin attack, I usually try to move the screen over a little bit so I can take on just one. This part's definitely a lot easier to do with two players. Since uh, I'm only uh, going solo here, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But this one's pretty much almost dead, so once I get this fucker out of the way, I can focus on this one. There we go. Alright, that's one less thing to worry about. There's so many hits I can get off this thing, actually. Alright, that was 10. Can I actually get more in? Alright, I got about 18. Not too bad. I feel like I could, uh, could have done that combo a little bit more longer, but I didn't want to risk it. There's an axe here, let's see. I think it's like a one-hit kill for the most part. Yeah, that's what I thought. So is anyone actually playing this game growing up? Because I feel like, uh, I mean, the majority of people I talk to, they know the house of the games, but when it actually comes to the Zombie Revenge itself, they have never heard of this game before. And I can't blame them. I mean, again, this only came out on the arcades in the Dreamcast. And, uh... If you weren't familiar with the House of Dead games, then you would never think that this is uh, related to uh, the series in some way. I think I've actually only come across one actual zombie revenge arcade cabinet growing up. Again, this out. is way back then, so I have yet to see any actual uh, recent zombie revenge arcade cabinets nowadays. Matter of fact, I don't even know uh, how uh, how rare they are to come across compared to, like, um, say for example, the first House of Dead game. I see that practically every arcade I go to. Alright, let me see if this boss can actually take out these enemies here. There's a way for him to do it. There, I'll just save time. I'll just give myself. Come on, do your electric shit. There we go. 
Thankfully that can be blocked, but like I said, tip damage, so be very careful with your dodging or blocking. So this boss isn't too bad, honestly. I usually like to keep my distance for the most part and get a couple hits in too while I'm at it. Ooh, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, uh, D D D D. this is definitely a fun game. I definitely recommend playing it. Again, it's not a, I wouldn't say it's a masterpiece by any means, but um, if you get a couple like of not a firm or so and just um, pretty much play from start to finish, it's fun. It's a fun game. Again, I don't know. I don't think this ties necessarily into the House of Dead storyline. Again, it's a spinoff. I don't think it's like a canon spinoff. Very interesting character, Mishujima is. I know he's in that other game, uh, Project X Zone, which I think was like that, um, it's like a cross, like, collab, like, multiple, um, video game companies and their characters. I think it was like a fighting game or like an RPG fighting game, which had, like, characters from, like, the Capcom side, the Sega side, Namco side, even the Nintendo side, I think. Yeah, surprisingly, out of uh, all the Sega characters, he, uh, Mishujima actually was in that game, I understand. So I'm gonna have to try at some point. Mr. Kima definitely needs more uh, attention. Alright, so before I even butter, let me kill these guys first. Get that life up. Nope, I don't want that. Get the landmine. And alright, here we're gonna have some of the most, I say the most annoying enemies are about to start here. Ah, oh, god, these are some annoying fuckers. Come on. There we go. Yeah, get used to that annoying sound, because they're going to be popping up a lot more frequently as this game goes on. They have some annoying-ass bastards. I cannot emphasize that enough, where it's uh, actual enemy design-wise or uh, sound-wise. But the flamethrower, though. This is some good propane shit, I'll tell you what. This is actually probably one of the best weapons in the game, personally, in my opinion. It sucks though that you only get to use it in this uh, this chapter and I think another chapter. Are you all right? This place is gonna explode in three minutes. What happened here? Uh, uh I'm telling you, man. Even the House of Dead one didn't have like this type of scare factor. This is more uh, House of Dead two, like, which again it makes sense. This, this game did technically come out around the time House of Dead two was already out. So that, I guess, that scary, uh, atmosphere is there. Wow, actually, PewDiePie, I'm actually, um, surprised you actually... Wait, so you're telling me this actually, um... Is there actually, is there actually an, uh, an arcade cabinet of Simon Revenge by you? Alright, so let's see. Oh, I didn't get to use the drill. Eh, kind of not worth it. Drill's kind of whack anyways. Yeah, you are right though. It's kind of hard to find people nowadays to play games like these. That's why we have netplay. But again, only a certain amount of people want to go out of their way to set something up like that. What are you doing? Why am I doing this? <laughs> you fools! God, the voice acting is just... It's just bad. <laughs> it's just bad. It's really bad. Now, talk about uh, interesting uh, enemy designs like uh, Cutie Bite pointed out. This is definitely a very, like, grotesque one. Again, very uh, Y2K era of uh, creature designs. Alright, actually, I'm gonna try to stop this fucking before he actually hits me with the flames. Alright, let me actually roll. Get out of here. Something tells him I'm probably gonna lose a life here. Oh, wrong way. Alright, actually, let me keep my distance. I'm gonna charge up a... Uh, up. Oh. Alright, please don't hit me. Please don't hit me. Thank god that it hit me. Alright, well, I should really be aiming the correct way. My god! Alright. 
Let's see if this strategy works. Ah, that works. Oh, shit! Damn it. <laughs> right into that. Alright, well, that's my first stop. Continue. Like I said, I'm not going for a one credit run here. This game is just gonna be a little bit unforgiving at times. Yeah, the Dreamcast version actually has co-op. That's actually the version I'm playing right now, uh, Katie Pie. It does have co-op. Matter of fact, okay? actually, it has a very interesting uh, mode too. Um, it's actually like a fighting mode too, where you can actually fight your um, other player. I gotta get, I gotta get the game props for that actually. Again, I don't know how much fun it is since again, at least when I was growing up, I didn't really play the multiplayer, or at least the fighting uh, mode for this game. But I'm pretty sure it's probably not good enough to make it to Evo. <laughs> if it does, then uh, alright, then I'll catch you guys at Evo in uh, July for uh, some Simon Revenge one on one. This guy off. Dial. But yeah, I do recommend definitely playing this with two players. It makes it a little bit easier, in my opinion. Just play this by itself. Like, it's definitely still possible, but it's a lot harder. And I don't know if this is one of those games, too, where um, if you have another player, then it multiplies the enemies. I don't think it does. South Union Railway. South hey, what's going on, Chris? How you been, man? Welcome to the stream. This runaway train Just playing some uh, Zombie Revenge on the Dreamcast. Uh, it's actually a spin-off of the House of Dead series, if you didn't know that. And, uh, again, it has some very bad, atrocious voice acting. Alright, get these guys out of the way. I cannot stand them. They are annoying. Thank God for that kick. That... Thank God for that axe kick. That gets the job done for these bastards so much. Alright, so it's actually a couple like secret areas we can go in through to this uh, episode, so this is gonna be the first one. Alright, this is life up back there, so let me just grab that really quickly. And now we can let's do go crazy. Matter of fact, you know, it probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to go down here first, then uh, grab the machine gun and then go back up and kill those little bastards. But, worked out better in the end. Alright, so this is the first area. I think the second train we're about to hop on is going to have technically two. There's going to be one on the right and one on the left. So, here, let's actually just go, let's start here. It's somewhere here, there we go. Alright. That life up. Grab the axe. Again, I really don't like using the axe that much. I mean, again, it's good for one hit at least, but uh, kind of has to still start up. All right, let's see. So I'm gonna grab all these lights up because they do are they're gonna disappear unfortunately if I don't grab them fast enough. And I gotta use this uh, axe. To good timing. That startup is so slow. Uh oh, shit! Yeah, th that's definitely gonna cost me a life. I feel. Oh wow, I actually got him too. All right, cool. Yeah, this is a tough area to like get through without uh getting hit. Again, very claustrophobic area, so I'm not really fond of in this game when it comes to like, these little bonus rooms. Yeah, this game actually does have two endings. It depends on um if you save the girl or not from the first uh, chapter. Yeah, again, usually with house that games um usually your ending depends on how well you do and uh, how many civilians you save or not. But uh, with this game, it just depends on basically if you save the, the chick from the first chapter or so. Alright, so that was the third room. I think the last one's gonna be on this side. But I wanna take care of these bastards first. Uh oh. 
Oh my god. <laughs> I hate these guys so much. They are such an annoying bastards to deal with. Alright, well that's two continuous use already. Alright, so I think the last secret's down here actually. At least for this um <clears throat> this uh episode. Alright, this one I gotta be very careful because I'm pretty sure uh there's a bunch of dynamites here. If I'm not careful, then uh I accidentally shoot one. I'm gonna take damage. So I'm just gonna take my time. And as you guys can see, this little weird creature bat hanging thing over there, and that's pretty much gonna be the boss for this uh, episode. Yeah, Bishop Jim was pretty much yeah, he's pretty much the mascot of uh, Zombie Revenge. Again, I mentioned earlier he was in Project X Zone. I don't use him that much, honestly. Like I try using him. Um, honestly, like I said, I think, in my personal opinion, Sick Brightly is probably the best character to use. He's like, the most balanced, at least as far as I, at least as far as I, I play this game. Bishujima is very, like, uh, I think once you like become a lot better at this game, he's probably the better one to play as, I don't know. But, uh, he's fun to play as still, don't get me wrong, but uh, I think, uh, if you want, like, something, someone who pretty much has the basics, and, uh, has good overall stats, and I think Sick Brightly is the way to go. But yeah, I'm actually surprised, uh, like I said, Bishop Jima actually made it into Project X Zone. I wouldn't think uh, Sega even bothered to care about such an obscure game like this one. So it was actually good that uh, Zombie Revenge got some uh, love. Alright, the brakes. So actually, this might be a good spot for actually uh, racking up points if you're trying to go for a high score. But again, you do you are you have a time limit, so you gotta use it wisely and obviously watch out for zombies. Okay. Alright, I think one more we should be okay. But I wanna get out of the way first. Now we should be good. Alright, so that part's not too bad, actually. Oh, look at that. That's a cute uh, reference to uh, Naomi. Like I said, it, um, this game runs on the Naomi board, technically. So, uh, that's a really cute reference. Alright. Oh, man. So this area, I swear to God... Actually, first let's get this weapon. Guitars, yep, but, well, you know, it's got a machine gun. I'm pretty sure this is straight out of that movie, uh, what's that movie called? Desperado? Something like that? As far as this, I mean, as far as this weapon go, it's okay. Kind of crappy, has a slow startup. I really don't recommend it. Alright, uh, this next part, how do I want to do this? I want to go for that machine gun, or I just want to go straight and try to grab that grenade in the next area. There's no time. Well, there's no time, so fuck it. I'm gonna risk it. Okay, let's do this quickly. God. Uh, I have a good feeling I'm gonna die here. There we go. Jesus Christ. That's a tricky part. I definitely end up always losing a credit or so, or continue because of that part. That's a very annoying part, but thankfully it went pretty smoothly for the most part. Alright, so as far as this boss goes, it's, again, you just take one look at this thing, you can tell right off the bat. Fucking disgusting, grotesque looking motherfucker is this. I'm telling you, man, something about the Dreamcast era of creatures just, uh, they don't make them, they don't make them anymore like they used to. Ooh, this is really good drum and bass music going right now. Alright, so this one, you gotta watch out for. Can you bump into you? Or sometimes he even has that one move, like right here. Some weird fucking design choices. I don't know what kind of shit they were smoking back in the day, but I want some of it. 
Alright, see if the move is gonna throw up. Yes, he is. Okay. That one's not too bad to get out of the way with, but at the same time, if you're uh, not sprinting, then uh, depends on you're gonna take a good hit or two. Oh shit. Alright, it's gonna throw up. Uh, actually, let me take care of these face huggers first. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Ah! <laughs> I mistimed my roll. Uh, that sucks. Uh, easier to that, or I try to block, but I get chip damage, so... I feel like I was gonna die either way. Alright, use the submachine gun now. Yeah, this one is definitely, uh, this boss one was definitely super memorable as well, cutie pie. And again, it has such a weird design. Honestly, a lot of these creatures, like you said, very interesting designs, but they're so, like, gross looking. That again, you wouldn't see this from normally in the house of that game. There we go. Yeah, that one's not too bad. Just the fact that uh, it's a mid-air enemy or a floating enemy doesn't make it any easier to attack. Show yourself. Using the dead as weapons. Stupid humans. What are you calling stupid? Time to put an end to this. By dawn, the god of destruction will be unleashed. All humans will die. <laughs> Nonsense. Then, no anime why like. Are you us around? <laughs> Nonsense. What do you want us to do? I don't know, Linda. What do you everyone? want us to do? You say everyone is going to die? I mean, that is what he said. <laughs> What's with the smoke? <coughs> Stick brightly. You especially must suffer. What? God. What is with this voice acting, man? It's just bad. It's atrocious. <laughs> it's really bad. I just, it's... Oh my god. Again, there's like different types of like tiers of voice of bad voice acting. There's Resident Evil, the first one. There's House of the Dead, the second one at least. The first one, I don't find too bad as far as voice acting goes. Then there's Zombie Revenge. I think Zombie Revenge takes the cake for probably some of the worst voice acting. This is like almost like the room equivalent of voice acting. It's tearing me apart, Linda. Alright, so as far as this episode goes, this one's actually probably the shortest, uh, I think, chapter, or episode. And, uh, again, I mentioned earlier, you're gonna be seeing a lot of, uh, House of the Dead references, and these enemies right here are literally straight out of the second game. The Ebitings, or however you pronounce their names. Alright, so let's see. Three of these fuckers are gonna pop out, trunk. And there's technically another zombie that's in that crate, but I'm actually going to save that for last because I don't want to fight four of them right now. Alright, cool. Now we get this one out. And I have to watch out for that because he can't attack me once he uh, comes out of that crate. Alright, so let's go to this little secret room first, before we go to this, uh, boss. Select weapons. This is actually a really cool room. Basically, you have pretty much all the weapons in the game. You can pick three of them, so I'm gonna go for the grenade. Machine gun, laser gun, bullets, landmine, landmine gun, and the flamethrower. I say this is definitely my, uh, go-to weapons for this room. Alright. Boss time. Huh. What's with this game? Uh, no, you know, honestly, I know of, um, Berserk, uh, Guts Raid for the Dreamcast, which literally, the game models literally remind me of that game. But, uh, I have yet to still play it to this day. I've only seen gameplay of it. I'm definitely gonna have to, uh, try that game out. I mean, I technically have it, I just never really bothered to play it. But that, uh, cover art always stuck out to me as a kid. Alright, so this has been this, uh, strategy, again. I'm gonna the first, uh, boss. I'm just gonna keep hitting him from behind. But at the same time, I kinda wanna keep my distance when he does that, uh, 360 attack. 
Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, Alright. I need him to get away from the weapons for a little bit. Uh-oh. Fuck! Is there even a way to dodge that attack? No, I don't don't think there is. At least it's stick brightly. Maybe if I'm playing as a uh, Bishujima or Linda. Ah oh, shit, that's gonna hit me in it. <laughs> Alright, you know what? Uh screw it. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now if there's a little bastard. Alright, get over here. Get the fuck over here. Thank god. Alright, at least stop that. This tracks. Say, so get the fuck away from me. Let me handle you little bastard here first. Shut up! Oh my god. Yeah, this boss is very annoying. Without those, uh, without the flamethrower, or the grenade, or the landmine, this boss is way more annoying than it has to be. Alright, now here is the chapter, The House of the Dead. And if you didn't think this game was already a spin-off of a uh, series, then this right here should be a blatant good example. Gotta say though, I gotta give him props. They did a really good job recreating the first uh, chapter of the first game. He even got the um, good um, soundtrack going. I think this, this is tech, the Saturn uh, version of uh, the soundtrack. Kind of does sound like it a little bit. It's definitely not the arcade version. Yeah, this uh, level is awesome. I think it's probably my favorite. Alright, so technically it's a shotgun there. Uh, this one enemy left. Might as well use it. Normally when it's crowded enemies, I won't use this weapon because it sucks. Alright, so let's see. Alright, this I forgot to use. Ah, uh, why'd I do that? <laughs> I should've just rolled. Uh oh. Oof, that was close. That was close. Let's say I'm already infected, so I might as well get those couple of kicks in. Yeah, I agree. It definitely was a good idea for them to use this uh, soundtrack instead of the RP version. I've always thought this, but the, sa the Saturn version of, uh, or the home console versions of uh, House of Dead 1 always had the better soundtrack. And I'm very glad, too, that uh, they went out of their way to use those versions on the official vinyls. Enough wasting time with that. Alright, this is a pretty tough part, actually. Just gotta make sure I don't grab that shotgun. Uh oh. No! Ugh. Damn it. Continue. This is a tough part to get through. This is a very tough part. Doesn't help the fact that all of them have shotguns. Shotgun. Shotgun. I wish there was a way to actually drop weapons, but the only way to really drop weapons is to really pick up another weapon. It doesn't help that every other weapon is a shotgun. Maybe it's another cute reference to uh, First House of Dead when Rogan busts the door open like a G. Oh god, so, alright, let's uh, prioritize these bastards, because they have a sh shit ton of health and uh, they are annoying. I thankfully, I think this is the last of them that we're going to see throughout the game. Alright, that's one. Alright, that's... There we go. My god. Oh, Alright, I think that's the last of those tiny bastards throughout the game, thankfully. Even, I gotta say, even the inside of uh, Kirin's mansion looks really good, straight out of the first game. But, uh, unfortunately we don't take the bottom path. We'll be taking the upper path, but before we go there, let's uh, hit this room real quick. Alright, so here's a little, I guess, secret room. Very Indiana Jones booby trap shit here. I want to try to grab that elixir, but at the same time, I want to take care of these fuckers first, just in case. Okay, grab that quick. 
So basically what the elixir does, it acts like another, uh, I guess, continue. Or pretty much, say for example, if you were to die, you actually don't use any of your credits. So actually spare you a credit or so. Alright, get me out of this fucking Indiana Jones booby trap, please. Come on, come on, come on! God. Yeah, but say, this is uh, the first game that I recall that actually has zombies using guns. Way before Resident Evil uh, 5 and 6. So take that cat. So take that cat bomb. Uh oh. Oh my god. Alright. Uh, okay. I actually don't mind using a shotgun here since it's only two of them. And uh, there's one now. God damn. I hate this part too. Honestly, anytime there's like four zombies with fucking weapons in this game, it's it's torture. It's torture. Alright, now we get some cyborg looking fuckers that uh shoot lasers. These guys actually are not too bad though. Just uh they they give you a lot of time I guess to react since they're fucking up your uh lasers. Nice. Alright, not too bad. Not too bad. Alright, who's next? Alright, so... Ooh, wow, alright. Basically the same, same as the uh, first and uh, last boss we fought. Same strategy I'm gonna use, but this one has a little flame effect after the attack, so... Let's see if I can just get it in the corner and just start hitting it from the back. Is it a cheap? Honestly, at this point, I don't even give a shit. There we go. Get a couple more hits in there. Yeah, that's it. That is an insanely way, easy way to uh, end those end that boss. But uh, I don't care. Alright, uh, I actually don't wanna- actually, you know what, let's- fuck it, let's just risk it. There's technically a life here. Yeah, I usually save that right before I hit that room, but, uh, I do not wanna risk getting killed here. And that's why I grabbed it, because I'm pretty sure that one move would've been enough to kill me. Alright, so before we even bother going to this boss, there's actually a room here. Let's open it up real quick. And we got the zombies here. Take them out first. Alright, so I'm actually gonna go for that grenade. I'll actually just be using it for the boss, but I actually want to take out these uh, zombies first. Now, as far as uh, chain gun and laser gun goes, they're okay. I mean, like, I wouldn't say they're really ideal of anything. I usually just prefer the grenade, it's just, it's very quick. You toss it, that's it. With the uh, chi chain gun and laser gun, they're kind of just like a slow startup. Grenade. So I'd rather just go uh, with the grenade. <laughs> Alright, let's see if I actually uh, end up dying at this boss, because this one can be kind of challenging for me at times. Huh, let's say I'll remember this room from the House of the Dead. Oh my god, it's Godzilla! Oh, no, never mind. Just some, uh... Alright, so this boss design... I can kind of expect this out of the house of the dead. Not necessarily, uh, grotesque, like, uh... Oh, come on! <laughs> Alright, that could have gone a lot better. Wow. Okay, we are sucking some ass right now. Alright, this must be, like, dual, uh, handguns I can grab. There we go. Let me actually get out of this one. Okay, run, sprint, sprint. Thank God they're horrible for that. Uh oh. Alright, my sheep. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. Alright, that's out of the way. Wow. 
I'm surprised that actually did not hit me. Alright, let's actually be careful here. Come on, die, die, die. Oof. That was close. That was actually very close. I'm surprised that zombie behind me didn't hit me. It is a beautiful looking moon. He said all those creatures were made by humans. That's right. Government top secret plan. UDS. Using the dead for weapons? A stupid plan. Yes, yeah, so we already established that. Like a couple of chapters, this, couple chapters before. But a scientist killed them and used them for his experiments. His name? Gil Brightly, your <laughs> father. I swore <laughs> I'd get my revenge. Oh, he said the word revenge. I will exterminate all Just humans like the title. with their own weapons. And I will kill you. See you in hell. Gotta say, that line itself, that's probably the only decent voice acting right there. The see you in hell line. Sounds very, um, yeah, you definitely feel the tension with that one. Are you okay, Linda? But you don't even bother to check up on your boy, Bishop Jima? What kind of loyal friend are you? Or loyal partner? Alright, so this is the last chapter of the dawn. Uh, this one, uh... As far as difficulty goes, yeah, it's kind of difficult, but as far as the actual final boss goes, uh... We'll find out. I don't think it's the most difficult, but, um... We'll find out. I can go one of two ways. And be my luck with games. I can already establish already how it's gonna go. Oh, come on! <laughs> uh, that's kind of whack. Alright. Probably not a good idea to stay in this corner. So let me actually get out of here. Alright. Now might be a good time to kill jump. There we go. I probably should be doing that a lot more, honestly, but at the same time, it does take a while to uh, charge up the gun. And you can't move, obviously, so... There we go. Yeah, you're right, actually, um, Chris Harris. I actually remember reading that, uh, apparently, um, Chris Redfield, the voice actor from the OG Resident Evil 1, um, voice stick rightly. I remember- I remember reading that somewhere. But I had no idea he, uh, voiced, um, the final boss as well. That I did not know. Huh, very interesting, actually. Very interesting. If only we could, uh, finally get some information, at least behind everyone- everyone else's voice acting. Alright, this thing has to give me some more bullets, dude. You know, honestly, I was thinking earlier, since you pretty much brought up that topic of, um, Chris pretty much the, being the voice of, uh, Stick Rightly and the voice, the voice announcer for this game. Um, what was I gonna say? I thought this game itself would be even shrouded in more mystery as far as, uh, voice acting goes, but, uh, I'm surprised that even, um, one actor, or voice actor, um, said, uh, they had a hand in voice acting in this game compared to, uh, How's It Dead 2. Where, to this day, we still don't really know necessarily the voice acting behind that game. I think if anything, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in my stream once, but um, I'm just gonna pause it right there for a second and try not to get hit after I unpause it. But um, I think I mentioned maybe the House of the Two stream I did a while back that um, the voice actor for James was apparently the face model somewhat for uh, Kendo in the Resident Evil Two remake. So not the voice actor for Kendo, but the face model. I read that somewhere, I believe. I believe the um the face or the voice actor for james and how's it too his name is um oh my god what is his name is it ryan something or i forgot what his name is i have to look it up again but um i believe he does have a twitter actually now i don't know if anyone from the community has gone out of the way to actually contact this dude and can confirm if he did voice uh james in the second us of dead game but as far as um that goes i'm pretty sure it if he didn't voice him, then I'm pretty sure at least he was the face model for Kendo in the RE2 remake. Because the faces um, definitely look very similar. Just wanted to point that out since we're on that topic. 
And uh, he's also said, wait, so Chris Redfield also voiced uh, Richter in Rondo of Blood 2. Really? I had no, wow, so even the Castlevania series. Uh, now, which Rondo of Blood? Was it the original version or like the PSP remake? Like, I'm not really familiar with um, Richter necessarily when it comes to Castlevania. Like, I know he was uh, in Rondo of Blood, obviously, Dracula X, you know, the Super Nintendo version. And um, what other games was he in? Uh, Symphony of the Night. He was in as well. Oh, you might be referring to Symphony of the Night, actually. All right, that's actually not too far off. As a matter of fact, now that you mentioned that, I kind of remember reading about that somewhere, too, where um, the voice of uh, Chris Redfield also uh, apparently voiced Richter, too, in Symphony of the Night. But I forgot there was someone else famous, too, or um, someone that was kind of, like, well-known, too, for uh, video game voice acting that also voiced um, Dracula in Symphony of the Night. I forgot which voice actor it was, though. I have to look it up too, but uh, I'm telling you, man, it's very interesting when you, uh, all these years when we uh, look back at the games we grew up playing and all these voice actors that we uh, never would have thought voice other games that we played. Some really cool shit. Alright, uh, let me try to pause this and not get hit in the process, so there we go. Oh, okay, alright, I thought he was actually gonna go a little more further with that attack. Okay, I have like literally three shots left, so I'm gonna punch him. Fucker. There we go. Are you gonna drop some bullets? No? Okay, no, he's not gonna drop any more bullets. God damn it. Alright, well, I know the second boss, or mini boss, I should say. Which, of course, I have all it would be this one. Alright, there we go. We still got some bullets there. Ah! Oh, he's gonna grab me. Ain't it? Damn it! Oh, come on, I was stun locked there. Alright, we still got three lives for credits. We're still, we're still cooking. Actually, does it pickaxe move with this bastard? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. You know, honestly, I don't remember how I did this back then as a kid, but there is a mode in, um, so there's arcade mode and original mode. And in original mode, there's like three different game modes you can play. You can play one where basically you don't use your fists as basically uh, ways of attacking. Or um, you can use um, just uh, your uh, handgun. And I have no idea back then how I did this with just the fists. With this part, especially. Alright, the moment we've all been waiting for. Okay, I'm finished playing around. I hold the God of Destruction in my body. Soon, I will release him. I'll kill you. You know, he could have done then, that like I'll be reunited five chapters with my before. Parents. You say he wanted to be reunited with his parents? Uh, wow. Well, um, not just me, but uh, I don't want to give him the whole low tier god speech for anyone who's familiar with that. But uh, if you have other means of uh, trying to see your parents, and uh, yeah, that's uh, you have another option, bro. You can go with the low tier uh, god speech route. But uh, yeah, we'll just uh, take it out on three innocent AMS agents right now. Alright, so as far as this final boss goes, he's uh, not too bad, actually. Thankfully, he doesn't, he doesn't have a lot of bullshit attacks. The only ones I can think of, really, is the one where uh, he just comes in and uh, just attacks you off screen. But uh, it's actually pretty easy to get a couple of hits in him, actually, and get a combo string going. Or certain, uh, certain other uh, bosses. My god. A lot of stuff, aren't you, man? Yeah, that move. I fucking hate that move. And just like that, my health is uh, defeated just like that. Oh, come on! That's so cheap! <laughs> oh, that's stupid. You really have one more hit left, just like that. Oh, I hate that loser attack. <laughs> Why do you still want to live? 
I don't know. I ask myself that same question every single day. This man's asking the important questions now. Is someone gonna say something? Oh god. Oh god, look, it's the magician from House of the Dead. How original. Oh, they even have the same uh, heartbeat sound. I've been waiting for this time to come. You have no future. Either I get you, or the Emperor will. Either way, your fate is in our hands. <laughs> Alright, so as far as this uh, final boss goes, he isn't much different from uh, the first phase. Just has a little, couple more moves off his sleeve, and like I mentioned in the beginning of the stream, uh, the terror card I pick is pretty much gonna come into play with this uh, final boss. But once I start getting this health down a little bit more... Uh, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way! What are you doing? There we go. Alright, so that's- I think that's how you time it. I'm just doing it a little bit too, uh, early or too late. Alright, let's just stop him there. God damn, stop that attack, damn bastard! It. Yeah, thank god I'm not trying to go for a one credit run. Alright, now I think he's gonna start using his tarot card. So, like I said in the beginning, this one's the easiest one to do with since he only spawned, like, two zombies? Something like that? His other ones were had, like, the flame and I think the lightning one were a lot harder to deal with. But thankfully this one, you just gotta take out two zombies. And thankfully he doesn't get in the way. So you don't have to necessarily multitask both the final boss and these uh, zombies. Alright, where's his best rat? Oh. Alright, down the way. Oh god, alright. How do you dodge this one? I have no idea how you dodge that, like, correctly. First time it goes. Wrong way, man. Oh, that's my fault. Alright, it's best to just, like, stay still. Alright, uh... Oh, god. Oh, never mind. Alright, this part I can do. This is not a problem. Shots, I think she should be done. Ah! Ah, come on! Okay, that's ridiculous, but whatever. That's it. Wow, end up using all my credits. Man, this game is tough. It's actually pretty tough, honestly, with just one player. You haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, that's, uh, again, not the worst boss, honestly. I gotta be honest, like, throughout the whole game, I don't think it's the worst or the hardest. But, um, definitely, uh, not too easy either. My father. You look... Hey, yo, what the dog doing? Hey, where'd that dog come from? Now he's hijacked a ship. Who? Who hijacked the ship? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness gracious, this voice acting. Yeah, so that's one thing I don't understand for this ending. Apparently, right after we just killed this bastard, Zed, now he's hijacked the ship. How? We literally just saw him like explode. Magician style, I should say. So I don't know how exactly he 
quote unquote hijack a ship now. You're all just standing there while the dog's ready to go. Dude, this dog is ready for action, man. I don't know why you couldn't play as a dog in this game. And that is Zombie Revenge. So let's see, it's gonna do the typical House of the Dead credit rolls where it basically goes through the entire uh, levels from uh, all the way up until the end, back to the beginning. But uh, yeah, this game is pretty fun, honestly. Um, I wouldn't say it's a masterpiece by any means. It definitely has flaws. Um, definitely is very hard to, if you uh, couldn't tell. Especially if just playing as one player. Uh, it's definitely quite a challenge you're gonna be into. And keep in mind, this is on the normal difficulty. Um, but I have to say, this is definitely a game you should definitely try out. If you have a Dreamcast or you happen to come across an uh, arcade cabinet somewhere by near you, in good condition too, I say give this game a try. It's definitely fun. It's, again, not a masterpiece. And um, a couple things I could have done a little better. But I do think for what they tried to pull off for a spinoff of the House of Dead series, I think it did a pretty good job for it for the most part. Again, not great, but I say it's far from a bad game. I say it's fun. It's a fun game to grab a couple beers with and play with your friend or so. And thankfully, the Dreamcast port, like I mentioned, has other modes too. So um, you could do uh, what they call versus boss mode, where I think it's like just a boss rush mode. And you can also do um, a versus mode, where you fight your other, other player. And since we got the good ending, let's see what happens. That bastard! He'd better hurry up and bring my money! Tell him to bring Game my over. money. Level zero. <laughs> so I think level zero is actually the worst you can get. And being that I literally uh, died right before uh, taking the final hit from him. That probably is why I didn't get a level nine or higher. I think level nine is the highest you can get. So the fact that I got a zero tells me I'm shit at this game. And my god, does that face still creep me out to this day. I think that was technically one of the first games I remember as a kid uh, scaring the shit out of me. So like I said, this game and House of the Dead 2 were probably like the only two games at the time I remember growing up that legitimately scared me out of my room. Whether uh, it was House of the Dead 2's uh, bad ending with Goldman or that uh, or that um, high score screen right there with the zombie close up. That shit is just scary looking. But um... Yeah, nonetheless, Zombie Revenge is a very fun game, honestly. I think, um, I don't know, I feel like they could have, I feel like this series could have, or spinoff could have had potential. If it not just been a one and done deal. I think, uh, they definitely explored it a little bit more. It could have been another cool spinoff that, uh, House of the Series could have benefited from. But thankfully, though, um, with games like Project X Zone, um, such as, uh, Chris Harris, uh, pointed out earlier. Um, they still had, uh, at least had decency to go back and bring back Mishujima as one of the characters. Which I do consider, like, the mascot of this game, basically. And, uh, yeah, as, uh, Chris said, this, there was gonna be a PS2 version, but unfortunately it was cancelled. For unknown reasons. Which kinda sucks, honestly. I think a PS2 version definitely would have benefited. Though I'm not sure if, um, that would've made the, um, the spin-off necessarily more popular than it, uh, quote-unquote already was, but, um... I don't know, I think a PS2 version definitely would've been cool to see, but unfortunately it was cancelled. Though, so makes me wonder if there happens to be uh, a potential build of it with still within Sega's possession or um, Data East because I think Data East technically also developed this game but if we're going off of uh, how Sega I guess uh, preserved the original source code for uh, the first house of the game then there's probably a good chance that this game in particular the PS2 port at least is probably not in their possession anymore it's probably long gone who knows you never know but yeah, there's also, um, like Chris said, there's other um, House of the Dead spinoff games. This isn't the only one, for like, example. You have House of the Dead um, EX, which I think was like, um, it took like the models from like, I think House of the Dead 4, I believe. And it pretty much made it like a really like, not your typical rush shooter, kind of like a bunch of mini games from what I saw. Again, I don't know too much about the EX um, House of the Dead game. But you also had obviously Typing of the Dead, which is basically, again, House of the Dead, but instead of shooting, you're basically typing out the words to kill the zombies. Very fun game too, I'll definitely have to do a playthrough of that one of these days as well. And you also had, um, Pinball of the Dead, which I believe was a Game Boy Advance exclusive title. Which, I don't know if that actually got a... Did that actually... I think it may have gotten a US release, but I never saw shit in the stores growing up, so... But again, it's basically just House of Dead with, uh, Pinball, as far as I'm aware. But yeah, like I said, uh, definitely give this game a play, guys. Uh, again, if you happen to have a Dreamcast, or get an emulator if you want, or if you happen to come across an arcade cabinet of this game, 
Uh, definitely give it a shot. It's fun. Again, picture basically Dynamite Cop and Die Hard. And uh, Streets of Rage put together what the house had dead do to it. And basically, you get zombie revenge. Again, combat is pretty fun too. It's nothing too deep, but at the same time, it's pretty simple to pick up and play. Though, like I said though, it is a pretty difficult game for the most part, so I would definitely uh, recommend having a second player, just to make things a little bit easier to get through. But other than that, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for the stream, guys. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everyone that came through. Uh, I do apologize for not being able to stream, basically, um, last week since I was sick. But um, I am feeling a little better now, clearly. So uh, back to streaming, basically. And um, just a side note, I did see the, with the community poll that there was a, kind of a tie between um, Zombie Revenge and Bomberman Heroes. Since uh, that community poll, I did um, ask you guys which game would you like to see a playthrough of. And Zombie Revenge was in the lead initially, then, um, excuse me, then, um, Bomberman kind of slowly, uh, picked up afterwards. So, with that being said, it looks like I'm going to be doing some Bomberman Hero, uh, playthrough next week. So, you guys can definitely look forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. Especially, uh, the soundtrack. I'm not sure if you guys know, but, uh, Bomberman Hero is, um, not only a really good game, in my opinion, but it has a fire soundtrack as well. And, uh, again, this is at the time where, uh, bass and drum, jungle music... And was basically, like, to, to me, at its peak. And uh, it's crazy to think that a game like Bomberman Hero pulled it off on N64, you know. But again, that's for the next stream, though. So, again, guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been a fun playthrough, as always. Uh, if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, if you're feeling generous enough, there is also a donation link in my uh, description that will go towards uh, the channel. And pretty much give you more options to uh, play games with, you know. Other than that, guys, uh, again, thank you so much for watching. Have a great night, everybody. Be safe as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next stream. Peace out.